Like other social learning theorists, Julian Rotter combines behaviorism with cognition. He says that the best way to predict what people will do is to understand how they think. He maintains that the likelihood of a particular behavior is influenced by what we know about rewards. Rotter believes that Skinner was essentially right. We do respond to rewards, but that system is too simple. We don't turn off our brains when we're rewarded. We use our brain power to make calculations about ourselves, the environment, and the rewards themselves. There are three component parts to Rotter's system. First, as Skinner would predict, we look at the size of the reward. We prefer big rewards to small rewards. Given a choice, we prefer to make more money versus less money. Bigger versus smaller houses, and faster versus slower cars. If we're going to receive compliments, we want lots of people to give them. If we're going to lose weight, we want everyone to notice. In general, we want the biggest reward we can get. Second, there is an expectancy of reward. We like rewards, but we really like rewards we know we can get. We'll turn down a bigger reward if a smaller reward is closer, faster, or more of a sure thing. We do risk assessment and determine the likelihood of receiving a reward. The reason we choose immediacy of rewards is that they have a higher expectancy of coming true. Rotter's main point is that we combine our calculations of expectancy, likelihood of its occurring, and reinforcement value, how big the reward is. I don't usually play the lottery, because I know the likelihood of winning is very low. I don't expect to win. But when the jackpot is over 20 million, I'll buy a ticket. Just one. I still don't expect to win, but I figure it's worth the shot for a large prize. We will take a risk in a situation with low expectation if the reward is high. Similarly, we tend to settle for less reward if the expectation is high. This explains why people stay in safe, low-paying jobs and why people stay in predictable, unhappy marriages. According to this model, if you believe your chances of getting a job paying 200000 a year is 20%, the job is worth about 40000 to you. Consequently, you might well choose to apply for jobs that pay 50000 if you're 90% sure you can get it. In your mental calculations, you'd be 5000 ahead by going for the lower-paying job. Our experience isn't that we're making mathematical calculations, but we are aware of wrestling with security versus reward. We realize that there are many more jobs available at mid-management than upper management. More available jobs means more likely. We know that actors who set out to become multi-billionaires won't reach that goal. A few megastars make huge salaries, but most actors make very little money. Rotter is suggesting that we are more rational than we realize. We use value and expectancy to make major life decisions. We don't behave randomly. We are not only responders to Pavlovian stimuli or solely influenced by rewards. As our environment changes, we use rules to determine what to do. Even in novel situations, we apply our knowledge of the past to the current conditions. Rotter suggests that we have two basic, relatively stable rules. One, the bigger the reward, the better. And the second one, safer is better. One of the places Rotter's theory breaks down is some people always risk, and others never risk. Some gamblers ignore safety and only look at reward, and of course some people only pursue safety. So think of Rotter's dual rules as being typical of normal people who are in the middle. 